So before Frigg was even released, there were rumors about her getting nerfed into oblivion, ratios getting clapped, her dash attack sucks now, etc, etc. And to be honest, I welcome these nerfs and the potential for like horizontal expansion of the cast rather than vertical which is aka power creep. It meant that the characters that we know and love today are relevant for a lot longer. And then she finally dropped, in which I then proceeded to hard pity for her, as I do. 120, baby, the whole hog. That event did lead to a few days of crippling depression, which is why I haven't been making videos. But during that time, I actually tried to use her. I was actually able to push my bygone phantasm to about 155 without too much effort afterwards. Figured out some basic rotations where previously I was actually stuck on level 110 despite having like the meta comp, so I'm talking like your Samir, King, Nemesis kind of thing. And on some level, I think that it might have been a skill issue that maybe I had just gotten better at the game. But on another level, I was actually wondering, maybe Frigg wasn't as bad as everybody was saying, that she was actually quite a decent character. And that, my friends, leads us to this video right here. <laughs> DPS calculations. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace. This is a Tower of Fantasy video, and today we're going to be talking about DPS calculations. We are going deep into the math of comparing everybody's favorite weapon, the spin to win, with the new apparently crappy sword over here, which to be honest, I don't think is actually that crappy. I think it might be better than Samir's pistols. I'm just saying, man, that's what the math says, okay? And so with that being said, I'm just going to alt F4 because as you guys know, I don't spend very much time in the game. I spend more time in PowerPoint. However, this time my tool of choice is actually going to be Premiere Pro considering I'm going to be doing a lot of frame counting. And so before I actually dive into my methodology as well as like all of the different conclusions I came to, I do want to remind you guys that this is just like my own personal testing that there are going to be a lot of gaps, a lot of assumptions made just to kind of make things easier because there is no way I can do like perfect simulations with what we have today. And so yeah, that's essentially my way of covering my own ass. Don't flame me if this kind of looks like stupid. But with that, uh, let's just get on with it. And so what I did initially was I had a look at the different attack chains of the Baomeng as well as the dual pistols and then recorded some footage and then counted their frames. So here is some of the example footage that I actually used to determine determine the skill lengths or the frame lengths of each of the attacks. So if I was to go a bit slower, as you can see, I have a dash attack going here that I have measured to be 46 frames, aka 0.76 seconds, because this was 60 FPS footage. And so I did this for like a couple of the key skills. I'm talking like the skill on the Frigg sword. I'm talking about like Samir spin to win. I'm talking about the dash attack on the Frigg. And what that meant was that in the DPS damage per second, I was getting the seconds. Out of all of that research, Search, I was left with the, essentially this data right here, this frame data as well as this time data. I then went to grab the skill multipliers for each of the attacks. So for example, the helicopter for Samir, I'm going to go in. And here you can see that the skill multiplier is 50.6%. However, for Samir, I counted the frames and I counted the footage. It turns out that she does about six hits. I think I saw seven ones. I'm not sure why, but I'm relatively sure it's six. And so therefore the skill multiplier for the helicopter is 300%. On the other hand, we We've got the Frigg, who is a little bit more straightforward, if I may say so. And so on her dash attack, it was 144%, so this one right here. And then you can see on her skill, it is 577%. Now, with these numbers, I was actually able to calculate the DPS, but only in a percentage per second, because all things held constant, you know, it should be okay. If everybody has like 1k attack, if we're attacking like the same kind of target, etc., etc., this pretty much hopefully makes maybe should give us a pretty accurate estimation. And so the findings of this were pretty much exactly as expected. We've got Frigg coming out with the dash attack doing 187% damage per second versus the normal chain, which sucks ass at about 104% DPS per second. And as you can imagine, the skill are doing 468%, which is going to mirror a lot of the skills in the game, considering the cast time isn't too bad. It was 1.233 seconds in which you could actually cancel a lot of the after animation. Now beware if you cancel her skill a little bit too early, you guys already know what happens. You lose the frost domain. DPS loss. On the other hand, Samir was dealing 230% per second, which is honestly astronomical, especially when you compare it to Frigg's dash attack. And so considering Frigg's dash attack is her main kind of DPS skill, plus maybe the skill itself. And so from here, I guess you could say that our job is done. We've done DPS calculations, let's just call it a day. No, not quite. I then went ahead and modeled these skills over time. So 
as you can see over here, C0 Frig dash attacks over 25 seconds. Why 25 seconds? Because the Frost Domain lasts for 25 seconds. Now, I know what it looks like. It looks like I'm going to bias towards Frig. It's actually not what happens because uh, Samir kind of looks like she's going to win out. But the TLDR of this section is that if you use one skill and you use 31 dash attacks, which is the amount of dash attacks that would fit into 25 seconds, you would come out with a skill percentage of 5,038. On the other hand, we've got Samir over here doing five helicopters because that was as many helicopters that I could do because of the stamina endurance thing. And what these numbers over here means that in five helicopters, I was able to do 1518% damage over 7.33 seconds. Or if I converted it to over 25 seconds, it would be 5175, which is unrealistic because as we know, the helicopters do require stamina regeneration. And so I needed to actually find a way to model Samir's one a little bit more realistically. That is take into account the stamina regeneration, which you can actually see up here. On top of that, I also wanted to take into account the Samir one star as well as the Baomeng one star. And thank you to the anonymous benefactor who actually donated 150 bucks on the stream and told me to go pull for the C1. Thank you very, very much. This video right here is for you. And so back to the spreadsheets, we've got C1 Frig DA over 25 seconds, that's dash attacks over 25 seconds, plus the Frosty Pop, in which the Frosty Pop was literally just 950% free damage at the end of the duration of the Frost Domain. So that was like 25 seconds, pop. To do this calculation over here, all I did was take the first one, which is the skill into the dash attacks into the 5k damage, and then add 950, which gave me 5988. Because that's exactly what happens at C1, right? You skill, and then you do 31 dash attacks, and then the frosty pops just at the end of the domain. On the other hand, I did a little bit of simulation on the C1 Samir assuming X percent of crit, because if you guys didn't know, Samir essentially does this like little explosion thing every time she crits, and that's gonna make calculations a little bit harder. And so I'm talking about this one over here, trigger an electrical explosion on the target after landing a critical hit. So you deal 30% attack every time that happens, and it happens every 0.2 seconds. And that's exactly what I did. I did over 7.33 seconds with a cooldown of 0.2 seconds, we're going to get 36.65 procs if our crit rate was 100%. If we have 36.65 procs at 30% each, it's going to give us this total damage, almost 1100. However, remember, this is at a 100% crit rate, which is not realistic today. But as we move towards Vera and like level 80 cap and all of like the gold gear and stuff, it will actually get pretty close. But for today's calculations, I'm actually going to use this one over here, the 50% crit, because it is what some people would deem as realistic. So if we only had 50% crit, then we would proc half as many of those C1 explosions, which means that our damage from that would be 550%. I then add this additional damage to the original five helicopters damage. So as you can see over here at 1518, and that's gonna bring me to 2067% over 7.3 seconds. Now, here is where it gets a little bit dank. I decided to draw the damage profile of both of these scenarios, right? So we've got the C1 Frig up over here, and then we've got the Samir C1 down here. So walking through this, this should actually make a lot of sense, right? We've got the 577.5% from the initial skill, the big domain. After using the skill, we then have 31 dash attacks, which lasts for 23.77 seconds, and this is going to yield us 4,460% damage. And then at the very end, we have the 950% from the Frosty Pop. Adding all of these damages together gives us a total damage over 25 seconds of almost 6,000%. And then on the other hand, we've got Samir's case in which she does five helicopters in 6.58 seconds. I did change this from like the 7.3 because I just did more testing and found that it was possible to actually fit into 6.58. My boomer hands got me 7.3 the first time. And then after the five helicopters, we then go into stamina recovery slash non DPS on the field, which lasts for 12.23 seconds in which after our stamina recovers, we can go back to the helicopters again. And coincidentally enough, this actually takes up 25.39 seconds, which is really, really damn close to the Frost Domain. I didn't rig this. This is literally just what happened. And so the method of calculation for this one is that five times helicopters with the extra explosions will yield us 2067%, which is what I showed you on the spreadsheet. We're going to do that once in the first 6.58 seconds. We're going to recover, and then we're going to do it again 
And then what that recovery time is, is that we are going to need to figure out how exactly it would be best to utilize this time, right? Because we have 12.23 seconds to kind of do some other rotations to filler until we can get back to our main DPS, Samir. And so what that meant was that the total damage for Samir came up to 4,067% plus Z%, percent, in which again, Z, this block over here, in order to match the frig damage, we had to exceed over 1,900 and 20% damage to beat Frig. And so there are a couple of different ways that we can try to make up that percentage. For example, with Samir, you're probably going to be running Nemesis or something, Discharge for 393%, and then you've got the Totem Drop, 39, about 40% every 1.5 seconds, as well as the skill damage, which is going to net you 232. On the other hand, we could actually take King, in which his skill is going to straight up do 500% damage, and his discharge is going to do 398, which is another 400, plus 330%. So if we take, for example, like this one right here, the king skill sets 500, that's 830, 830 plus about 400, that's about like 1,230. And then with the skill, that's gonna bring us to almost about 1,500. Can we fit all of that in 12 seconds? I think we can, especially if we do get a Fantasia in there as well. And so yes, I think with some filler skills, whether it be King or Huma or Meryl or whoever, I think that they are gonna be over 25 seconds actually pretty freaking similar. If you can, in this recovery phase, exceed 1920, then you've already done better than Frick. That's kind of like the TLDR of what I was just saying. However, one key thing to think about for this one is that this is using the 50% crit case. And if we use the 100% crit case, then this number would be a lot closer. It'd probably be like, I don't know, 1400 or something. And so at this point, I was looking at these kinds of like simulations. I was like, man, that's actually quite a lot of damage from Frig, and that's quite a lot of damage from Samir. They're almost comparable if I have a look at this like Z factor over here. However, I did not stop there. I then went on to do a 60 second simulation in which I did two frig rotations and like two, three and a half of the Samir one. And I ended up with a similar system of equations like down here, right? 11, 9, 7, 6.8% plus 2y, because 2y over here, 1 and 2, versus the Samir case, where the addition of all of these ones over here, 7325%, plus the downtime over here, 12.23 seconds, three times, three times z percentage. So when I look at these equations, as well as kind of like the damage profile over 60 seconds, I would say that they are actually remarkably close, but not only that, that there is actually a lot of potential for one to be better than the other. So you can see the frig rotation, 25 seconds of the fishing, fishing, and then you got five seconds of downtime in which you could like actually quick swap to your Meryl, swap to your Zubasa, whatever, and then go back into the shishing shishing. And you want to go back to your shishing shishing because it's actually dealing almost 6k percentage damage over 25 seconds. On the other hand, looking at Samir's damage curve, it's got like a lot of potential or rather a lot of gaps to actually fill up. So depending on what you use in these 12.23 second intervals, it's actually going to greatly affect your total team DPS. And so another observation that I wanted to make that we kind of knew from the very start was that Samir's helicopter is actually out DPSing Frigg's rotation. But as we can see, there is a significant amount of downtime, almost twice as long. I think that if it was up to me, I would actually pick Frigg's rotation instead, even if they were at like a similar damage or DPS, because Samir's damage is really, really dependent on you being able to manage that stamina, being able to rotate out quite a lot, and for you to actually jump right back into it when the stamina is ready for you to go helicopter. And between the helicopter and just like dash attack spamming for the next 25 seconds, I think this brainless one over here is probably going to be easier to maintain and it's more representative of what could actually happen in real practical use. And so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with this. Just judging by the numbers, I think Friggs is better and I might get crucified for saying this, but like if you do have some problem with the methodology with how I did things, then do let me know in the comments below. But before we do wrap things up, I do want to mention a couple of other qualitative observations, which is that Friggs rotation, she can actually scale really, really hard exponentially because her 
her AOE, her vertical range, is very, very long, especially compared to Samir's. When you do the helicopter, it's actually not that big of a range, although it's, yeah, okay, it's, it's quite big. On top of that, the crazy amount of unlimited dodges that you can do whilst in the frost domain just makes it so much easier to not only avoid damage, but to actually trigger the phantasm as well. That is not to say that Samir's helicopter has no, well, defensive capabilities either, because you are actually in the air, you do have a less likely chance of getting hit. Back to Frigg over here, one interesting use case that I do use her for is breaking, which is absolutely crazy considering her breaking capabilities aren't exactly that good. In addition to having an A for breaking, she actually also has A for charging. So that means that I'm getting a lot of abilities up every time I am using the dash attacks. On the other hand, Samir's dual pistols actually has a higher charge rate. And so what that could mean is that she is going to be getting a lot more discharges than you would get with Frigg's longsword. And so yeah, unfortunately, the model that I've created, the simulations, they don't take into account any of these things. I didn't even take into account rotating in Samir's skill. However, just from going like from the frame rate analysis to the DPS and then going to model them to 25 seconds and then eventually going to 60 seconds and all of that, I do actually think that Frigg is more competitive than Samir in terms of damage as well as safety as well. And on top of that, this was evaluated at C1, in which most people hail as Samir's best constellation star advancement thing. So yeah, that's going to take us to the end of the video. The point of this video wasn't to be like, oh, Samir is better than Frigg or Frigg is better than Samir. The point was to show myself and to show you guys that Frigg, I don't think she's as bad as everyone thinks. I think she is actually competitive with Samir, if not actually better. And so hopefully this video will also inspire a little bit more in terms of theory crafting, because as we can tell, there are a lot of assumptions made. There are a lot of factors which weren't taken into consideration and this model can just be improved upon, but I unfortunately had to stop here. So yeah, it's at this point where I would ask you, is Frigg comparable to Samir? Do you think that the calculations that I did all the way up to here are kind of valid? Did I actually convince you that maybe Frigg is not as trash as everybody is saying? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. If you did enjoy this video or found it kind of helpful, then please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, and turning on that notification bell. However, as uh, as my long swords once said, oh my god, uh, all good things must come to an end. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.